Welcome to USA News Today. I am Allison Mayfield here with Judy Davis and we are eyes and ears to the Rosenberg Trials, May 29, 1951. The Rosenbergs have been charged with the conspiracy to commit espionage. For those of you who do not know, espionage is the process of using spies to gain information from other countries. In this case, the Rosenbergs were leaking information to the Soviets. Julius Rosenberg was born on May 12, 1918 in New York City. He is the son of two Russian immigrants. Investigations show that he was part of the Youth Communist League as a young boy and he became secretary of the league in college. Ethel Rosenberg, previously known as Ethel Greenglass, was born on September 28, 1915, also in New York City. She's the daughter of a Russian father and an Austrian mother. Ethel and Julius married on June 18, 1939 and have two sons. The United States security found out that Ethel had signed a Communist Party petition. Before committing espionage, the couple publicly dropped out of the group so that they could begin secretly leaking information to the USSR. Our field reporter, Jane Smith, is reporting live at the New York Southern District Federal Court. We will now go to her at the scene. Julius Rosenberg have just been sentenced to death under Section 2 of the Espionage Act. This act states that no person of the United States can transfer any top secret information to other countries. This trial has been going on since March 6, 1951. We have just gotten news that the trial has ended and Julius and Ethel are coming out shortly. We are here to talk to Max Ethlicher. against them, myself included. Could you elaborate on what you and others have testified against him? Julius asked me to supply him with plans, reports, and books that contain top secret military information that could help the Soviets. Is there anything else you can tell us at this time? Another person testified that Julius Rosenberg was in contact with the underground communists. Thank you for your insight. Here come the Rosenbergs now! Why do you lie about such a thing? My clients are not up to any more questioning right now. Julius! Uh, Rosenberg, Julius! Julius! Rosenberg! 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 This has been Jane Smith reporting live from the courthouse. Back to you, Allison. Thank you, Jane. So far, the Rosenbergs are the only people put to death for espionage during the Cold War. The FBI had found out that the Rosenbergs had been transmitting secret information regarding the atomic bomb by successfully deciphering intercepted messages from the Soviet consulate to the KGB, which are the state security police of the USSR. The Rosenbergs have been helping Russia gain secrets of the atomic bomb, which they gave them the lead on the technological competition between us and the USSR. David Greenglass, who is Ethel's younger brother, confessed to his crime, and his wife Ruth supported his testimony against the Rosenbergs. We now have a special interview with Ruth for you. Hello, hello. We are so happy that you could join us for this interview. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. We heard you had a great impact on this case. Would you give us some details about your testimony? Yes, yes. Well, I had an inside scoop on the Rosenberg's espionage through my husband. Julius was able to easily manipulate my husband, asking him to find information on the Manhattan Project, including documents, handwritten notes, sketches of the bombs, and names of the scientists. Uh, we also heard that you uh, were able to bring the evidence that the prosecutors used against Ethel. Yes, I also remembered that, as I have an accurate memory. Um, Ethel was the one who typed up my husband, my brother's handwritten notes at the trial. My brother testified this, and I did also. Did you bring anything else to share with us? Uh, yes, actually. I have a quote from the trial. Would you like to hear it? That would be wonderful. Okay. The chief prosecutor, Irving Sapol, said, and I quote, This description of the at atom bomb destined for delivery to the Soviet Union was typed up by the defendant Ethel Rosenberg that afternoon at her apartment at 10 Monroe Street. J. 
Just so had she, on countless other occasions, sat at that typewriter and stuck the keys, blow by blow, against her own country in the interests of the Soviets. This was the end of the dance that got her her sentence. Thank you so much for your time and insight. Now we're going to bring it back to the big picture. How has this and other accounts of espionage affected the Cold War after the break? How happy are NATO countries? Happier than a math whiz with a chalkboard. And we are back. For those of you just tuning in, we are seeing how the espionage, like the Rosenbergs, who have been sentenced to death, have affected the Cold War. We have been in this Cold War since about 1946, and tension had been building beforehand. Since then, we have been competing with the Soviets for just about everything. Allies, technology, and military advances, including atomic bombs. We have used many ways to outdo and outtop each other. One of these ways is through espionage. During the Cold War, countries used espionage in place of direct fighting to win many competitions, including technological advances. For example, Russia was behind on the atomic bomb technology, though they were able to gain secrets through spies, such as the Rosenbergs, which g this gave them the opportunity to catch up in the global competition. Espionage also adds to the cold atmosphere that the war is causing. As you can see, spies can pay a high pr price for the portrayal of their country. This was USA Today with Ju Judy and... Allison, thanks so much for watching. And your Cold War information. I'm Jane Smith. <laughs> Stop talking. <laughs> Ethel and Rojo Jalamash. Now the star in heaven that we can extra. Two sons. You're 